Thank you so much for doing the uh, puja for him. And also, so today I will review, uh, do the short revision about the uh, lumbering practice. Let's say, you know, we everybody are uh, like Buddhist. So, as a Buddhist, so we have to believe in Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, Buddha is our teacher, our guide, Dharma is the real protector, Sangha is the helper, help us how to practice Dharma. As a Buddhist, we need very pure, stable refuge into Guru, include Guru, Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. In order to have pure faith towards Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, we need to know the qualities of the Buddha, the qualities of Dharma, the qualities of the Sangha. Not only that, we must know if I take refuge into Buddha, what kind of benefit I can have, what kind of benefit I can give others. After I take refuge into Dharma, also we must know what kind of benefit we can have, what kind of benefit I can give other through practice of Dharma. Also, before we take refuge into Sangha, we must know the quality of the Sangha as well as we know if I take refuge into Sangha, what kind of benefit I can have. If I don't take refuge into Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, what kind of disadvantage I have. Also, what kind of benefit I can give others. Therefore, we really have to know how the qualities of the Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, and the, all the benefits, you know, taking refuge into Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. When we have really pure, stable, you know, fair thoughts, triple gems, then we can consider ourselves, I am Buddhist. After you become Buddhist, you know, what kind of practice we must do? What kind of practice we always have to do? This means it depends on the practitioner, depends on the, you know, uh, follower of the Buddha Dharma. If you are very, you know, simple practitioner, if you don't know much how to practice Dharma, then simply you can follow the small scope path. That means always, you know, believe into the, the karma, the positive karmas and negative karmas. The positive karma always give rise suffering, uh, sorry, uh, happiness and pleasant. The negative karmas always give rise suffering and unpleasant. You just fully believe, you know, the consequence of the karmas and try to avoid, try to not engage into the negative actions. So, there's a, you have to do two practice, two practices. One, try to, you know, reduce, try to have a less negative uh, actions and try to purify negative karma, accumulate lot of positive karma. Do to the positive karmas, then you are you have a happy life in this life, you have a lot of happiness in this life, also you can have a happy life, you have a lot of happiness in next life. Because you have the positive, you know, the, uh, the uh, uh, conditions. The positive condition always give you the positive results. Therefore, what Buddha said, you know, this is exists because something already exists. Then you need you know certain amount of sense of uh, scary about the lauriums. Then if you want to do more you know higher practice, higher level practice rather than the just simple practice, then you need to know the the nature of samsara. Top of them, you know, you must 
uh, try to eliminate negative karma, try to accumulate a lot of positive karma based on taking refuge into Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha. Then if you want to do, you know, higher practice, then you really have to know the Four Noble Truths. When you try to understand Four Noble Truths, first you try to know the nature of the truth of suffering. When you really understand, understood the truth of suffering, then it push you to overcome from the suffering, overcome from the uh, samsara, overcome from the causes and conditions of suf uh, suffer, samsara, samsara and suffering. Then not only that, second, then you need to know the origin of sufferings. So when you, uh, when you fully understood the truth of suffering, then you are for you very easy to generate the renunciation because you feel you have you know strong desire to eliminate to the, the the suffering to overcome from the suffering second that you need to think how i can you know overcome how i can be free from suffering that you need to reflect you make a reflection what are the causes and condition of the sufferings to the suffering the mainly you know three poisons mind which is ignorance, attachment, desire. Due to the three poisons, we have a lot of other negative thoughts, a lot of other, you know, afflicted emotions arise within our mind. Due to all the afflicted emotions, we have a lot of negative actions. Due to negative actions, we have a lot of sufferings. Then, among the, uh, you know, afflicted emotions, First, you need to know, you know, at how anger arises, how attachment arises, you know, who really arises them. Then, you must know, the more you have attachment, the, you, the more you have uh, anger. All the anger, you know, hatred, mainly rests you know, based, based on attachment. So, in attachment about your belongings, attachment about your relatives, attachment about your, you know, wealth, position, name, whatever. Therefore, you know, anger arises because of the attachment. And attachment arises because of the ignorance. When you have a ignorance about your belongings, you think my belongings are so important, so nice, so good, and somebody said no good, then you have a angry you, you get angry and upset. This means anger always arises based on attachment. Attachment arises based on ignorance, which is not really know the truth of the you know, phenomena. Therefore, look at as our sentient beings, as our ordinary being, we have a very strong attachment towards our belongings. We have a very strong attachment towards human being, you know, someone. Because we don't know the nature of our belongings, also we don't know the nature of the person, nature of the, our, you know, place, house, money, things. So if you really know the truth of everything, then you will understand the nature of the phenomena. Once you understand, understood the nature or reality, or reality of phenomena, then you will understand, you will understand ignorance is mistaken mind. Because of you know ignorance, ignorance and wisdom never coexist in the same degree in the same time. When ignorance arises, you know the wisdom which relies, you know truth is declined. When wisdom which relies the reality is increased, ignorance going to decline. Therefore, we must know ignorance is the root of the samsara. Ignorance is the origin of every, you know, sufferings, include all the every emotions. Therefore, when you meditate on truth of suffering, then you will uh, generate, you, know, you will uh, practice, you know, you are you actually, you are really practicing renunciations. So when you realize origin of sufferings, then you will know how to cut 
the root of samsara, how to overcome all the problems and miseries. Then, when you realize, you know, the truth of the phenomena, which is emptiness, selflessness, then you have to know, if I practice, you know, wisdom, if I practice emptiness for a long time, then you will, be, you will go understand, yeah, one day I can cease, I am able to cease all the sufferings, all the emotions. Then you will understand, you know, the, the third truth, which is truth of cessation. So truth of cessation is, uh, is not like a place we can go, we can go and we can, we can come back. The truth, of self, and the truth of cessation is the, you know, the kind of mental quality. So far you have all the affliction emotions, you are not cease all the affliction emotions. When you eliminate all the affliction emotions, including ignorance, then you, you, your mind has, you know, can, has the cessation. The cessation can be achieved when you really follow the path, which is the first which is the fourth truth, truth of, truth of the path to cessation. So when you think about the path, so then, you know, simbali, simbali, you know, uh, sm uh, small scope uh, being, you need to practice the path, which is the, for the small scope being, you know, the ten virtues practice is the path. And then the middle scope being, you know, practice of the four noble truths, practice of truly interdependent, practice of renunciations, practice of uh, sableness are the part to achieve cessation, part to, uh, uh, part which is able to eliminate ignorance and attachment. Therefore, when you, when you want to practice, you know, more than the small scope part, then you need to practice for noble truth. You can practice for noble truth when you fully understood the meaning of the Four Noble Truths. Therefore, you know, this is what we consider, you know, medium um, capacity path. Then, even though you, you must realize, you must understand, you know, even though if you just achieve liberation, you, you are free from samsara, you are free from effect emotions, you are free from ignorance, it doesn't mean still you, you know, fully achieve your own achievement. In order to achieve the complete achievement, then you have to become a Buddha. When you become a Buddha, then you will achieve your own achievement. You can have, you can achieve, you know, achievement for others. The thought that you need to think, becoming, you know, Arhat, achieving liberation is not my final goal. My final goal will be becoming Buddha. Then you need to think how I can be Buddha. Then, you know, top of the small scope path, middle scope path, then you need to practice mainly Bodhicitta. Bodhicitta with the six perfections. Six perfections. So, Bodhicitta you can be developed through practice of seven causes and conditions, all in you know, exchanging seven, uh, as, uh, other uh, exchanging of self centered attitude and you know other uh, benefit more benefit others that means you need to practice you know two practices in order to develop bodhicitta as an ordinary being as a very you know beginner you follow the fast which is you know through practice of seven cause and condition very easy to follow the steps also very easy to uh, practices practice therefore most of us try to practice seven cause and cause and effect in order to fully accomplish, not just fully understand, fully accomplish bodhicitta. You follow, you know, the seven cause and effect. Then only you know, accomplish bodhicitta is not enough. Then you have to practice bodhicitta with the six perfections. Bodhicitta is a kind of you know, like a ground, bumi, like a foundation to achieve Buddhahood. Between Buddhahood and Buddhist, Bodhicitta, you need um, you know, seven, uh, six perfections. So whatever you practice, practice compound with the six perfection. For example, first, you know, the generosity. When you 
when you give something to someone, even though you offer, you know, you give, you know, small piece of bread to the bath and dog, any, you know, fish, or you're giving something to other, first, you generate, you know, great compassion, mainly benefit all sentient beings, particularly benefit to the particular who need it, the needed one. That means you are practicing great compassion, as well as you are thinking, this I'm doing, this practice I'm doing in order to achieve Buddhahood. That means also you are practicing Buddhichita. Then actually giving a practice of generosity. When you give something to someone, you give, give by, must give by ethically, be, you know, uh, must give based on ethics. Then you, ethic means when you give something to someone, make sure you don't have a sense of pride. Make sure you, have, you don't have a sense of jealous. Because when we, when we give something to someone, sometimes we have a very strong pride. You know, I am giving this to that. So make sure you don't have any negative thoughts. That means you are practicing ethical discipline. You, are, you know, there's a three times, one to restrain all the negative thoughts. Then, so when you give something to someone, you give with a you know, sense of joy, effort. If you give, you know, with a sense of joy, effort. That means another, you know, you know, perfections. Also, when you give something to someone, that time somebody say, oh, is somebody said directly, it's too little. Somebody didn't say, you know, somebody didn't say it's too little, but they show you it's too little, it's nothing. But that time you should not get angry and upset. You have to be, you know, be patient. That means simple giving thing to someone, you can compound six perfections, practice of six professions as well as bodhicitta, uh, uh, bodhicitta and great compassion. Generally then you can think the practitioner, you know, yourself, the thing which is you giving to someone, the recipient who received the things, just remember everything, the nature is emptiness. That means you are also practicing, you know, wisdom. You are practicing emptiness. That means after you fully accomplish, fully generate the bodhicitta, don't forget to practice six perfections. Only bodhicitta, you cannot be Buddha, you cannot achieve Buddhahood. Therefore, within the six perfections, you know, the last two are, two are very important. Practice of uh, concentration, meditative concentration, practice of wisdom. And you know, this day we have been studying about uh, meditative concentration. Then how we must do, you know, how we must um, do the meditation is very, you know, meditation is very, you know, popular topic. Also many people, you know, trying to do meditation, but they are mainly, you know, do, you know, simple kind of uh, uh, concentration, not really you know, complete meditations. In order to have complete meditation, you must remember there's a two conditions. One is the external condition, the place where you practice, also, you know, the six feature of, you know, physical body, how you must sit. Or if you, if you have a physical problem, then you can sit, you know, you know, whichever you want. If you don't have physical problem, you must follow the instruction you have, you need, your body must be very straight. That means you remember the seven features of the meditation posture. Then you have an external condition. Then inner condition, in order to practice, you know, like concentration, you must remember, first you need to know, if I practice meditative concentration, I will have all these benefits right benefits then you need to know the consequence or the result of meditative concentration when you fully understood you really believe if i do meditation i will have all this benefit then you eager to do you know meditations without knowing any benefit simply you thought if i do meditation i can i can be you know very healthy person i can have a calm mind just simply or you think this way then you are really you really don't understand you know the meditation 
Therefore, you should think, if I do the meditative concentration and the correctly, then first I will control my mind. My mind always I can use, I can apply to toss in the virtuous actions. If you able to control, fully control your mind, since you won't have, you know, really, you, you won't accumulate any negative actions because you fully control your mind. Your mind always you can use, you can apply to, you know, the virtuous actions. First, you think this way. Second, if I able to achieve, you know, the correct military concentration, then I can have, you know, the surveyable physical body, surveyable physical mind. If I have both of them, then I can do meditation on bodhicitta, emptiness, six perfections, without having any physical problem, without having mental problems. That's why, first you need to know the benefit. When you see the benefit, then you, have, you need strong, you know, joy effort to achieve bodhicitta. Then you need to generate strong faith towards meditations. Actually, faith, you know, when we talk about faith, there's uh, two types. One is uh, faith fully believe in, fully believe in. Another faith fully wish to achieve, you know, kind of, is, is kind of aspiration. There's been two types of faith. So you really need strong faith on meditative concentration. Then, when you really enter into meditation, so first you need to check your mind what kind of you know mind you have what kind of emotions you have of course we everybody have a same amount of you know emotions negative emotions but you know somebody has a stronger somebody have a weaker somebody have a you know you know weaker for continuously somebody have a very strong continuously but the number of Every emotion is same for everybody. You are old, you are young, you are rich, you are poor, you are Buddhist, you are non-Buddhist, you are human being, you are not human being, you know, cow, animals. Everybody has a same number of negative thoughts, negative emotions. Therefore, first you need to check what kind of, you know, negative emotion I have. Yes, I have all these negative emotions. Do you have attachment? Yes, I have attachment. Do you have anger? Yes, I have anger. Do you have a pride? Yes, I have pride. Do you have ignorance? Yes, I have. Nobody say I don't have pride. Right? Anybody gonna say I don't have attachment? No, I have right. Do you for I ask myself? Do you have attachment? Yes, I have. Do you have anger? Yes, I have. Do you have ignorance? Yes, I have. We have everything. So we have everything. Then even though within the you know negative thoughts, you need to check which. Afflict emotion is very visible, very strong, very strong. Because in order to achieve meditative concentration, we need to minimize, we need to reduce, you know, the stronger negative thoughts. Otherwise, when you try to meditate, the negative, strong negative thoughts in distract your meditation. Therefore, you need to check, you know, what kind of negative I have. Yes, I have all kinds of, so which is strong. Then you must remember, even Lamrim. <clears throat> yeah, sometime in the morning, maybe you have a strong attachment to do something, strong desire to do something. Right? Or every morning, everybody have a plan to do something. Evening, maybe everybody or most of have anger. Right? This means you must check. You know which emotion is more stronger, the most time with you. Then, if you think, yeah, all negative emotions almost, you know, arise with me, you know, same amount, not really stronger, nor weak, it's very equal, then, simply, you need to choose, you know, the, the stable object of meditation, stable. That means, you know, if I ask you to focus on, meditate on the Buddha's Shakyamuni, the Buddha's Shakyamuni, image of the Buddha's Shakyamuni may be suit to you, it is not stable for others. If I ask medicine Buddha, Amida Buddha is suitable for someone, not necessarily stable others. 
That's why you must you must choose which you know object is the best in order to accomplish meditative concentration. Then you know today you are okay, but tomorrow morning suddenly you have a strong you know anger. Then you need to think why I'm very angry this morning. Yes, yes. First, you need to think why. Second, most important, you must reduce the angry. What Buddha said, when somebody shot, shot you, you know, poison arrow, remember this one, poison arrow, shot you? Don't ask, who shot me? Why shot me? Shot me? Just you pull out the arrow. Otherwise, the poison, you know, poison, what do you say? Spread, yeah, yeah, spread all parts of your body. Then so difficult to do the treatment, right? Look at first time somebody says something to you, you have a strong anger. The anger is not really, you know, that, you know, strong. After you thinking, you know, few scan in a few days, then anger become more stronger and more stronger. Then you know it makes you very unhappy. Therefore, first you think. Why I am angry? Yes, due to that and that that reason. Then you use certain logics and reasoning and try to minimize, you know, the anger. When you try to reduce anger, the best antidote what? Love and compassion. Love and compassion, right? Then I told you, you have if you are very angry with Mr. Mr. A. You meditate. You you come you you practice compassion on. Mr. B, his is doesn't work, right? That means if you are angry with Mr. A, develop, generate compassion, love toward Mr. A, you know direct, you know force. Then sometimes, oh, somehow in you know, afternoon, I have a very strong attachment, attachment my belonging, attachment you know with someone, attachment with my name, my position, you know attachment about my dharma. Then, do you remember the antidotes? Ugliness or essenceless? It's okay, you can leave here. No need to table. Yeah. yeah. Essenceless, essenceless and ugliness. Okay? Essenceless and ugliness. Because we cannot say, you know, everything is ugly. For example, somebody have a very strong attachment on the position and name. We cannot say the position is ugliness, you know, the name is ugliness. Mainly when you have a certain attachment towards, you know, someone, that time we can perceive, we can consider the person is one of the beautiful person, one of you so pure, so, you know, beautiful, so perfect. When you consider the person is ugly, then for you very easy to reduce the attachment towards someone, not the position, not the name, not of you know belongings, therefore be essenceless or ugliness. That's why in order to reduce attachment, you just choose the meditation object is you know like ugliness or essenceless. Think about you know the name and you know fame things. Somebody is very famous, become very famous, very popular. We consider, oh, the person is so famous, I want, to fam I want to be famous like him and her. Because we think if I become famous like that person, I will be very happy. Right? But it's not necessary the famous person is very happy, the rich person is very happy, you know, the beautiful person is very happy. No, not at all. Therefore, in order to reduce attachment, the best object of meditation you, not, you choose, you know, essenceless and ugliness. Then pride, you know, many people has a different type of pride. They used to remember what kind of object. So you must select, you know, the stable object of meditation. So when you do meditation, I hope you remember there's a two purpose. Purpose one, you are doing meditation based on this object mainly to achieve meditative concentration or serenity, right? Serenity mean I'm doing this this practice this meditation mainly for achieving what serenity, yeah, calm abiding. If you're doing this mainly for this achievement, then the object always 
keep same object. You should not change the meditation meditation object. If you at the beginning, if you chose, you know, Buddha Shakyamuni, always always focus on the Buddha Shakyamuni. If you focus, if you chose, you know, ugliness, essenceless, compassion, whatever, you should not change the chosen object. If you change very often, you cannot achieve serenity. Right? Then second, you do the meditation in order to, you know, reduce particular emotion. This must, then you must change the object. You must change, it must change the object of meditation. Otherwise, you know, you are very angry. You, you are very angry. You try to practice, you know, like a, uh, you try to practice other thing. It doesn't work. That means angry, you know, meditate on compassion. Attachment, meditate on essenceless. Ignorance, meditate on interdependence or emptiness, selflessness. You have to change the object of meditation in order to minimize, reduce, eliminate, you know, different types of emotions. Then, so actually when you, you know, meditate on something, meditate on the object of meditation, then at the beginning, you know, you must remember at the beginning which object you choose. When you at the beginning, first you are able to remember the object. Remember the object. You you are able to focus on the object for short moment. Then the object may be you know disappeared for you. So difficult to keep the object of meditation continuously. Then that means you you have what what problem you have a problem of forgetfulness because you forget the object of meditation right in order to you know eliminate minimize the forgetfulness you need what mindfulness you, you really need to increase your mindfulness your memory mindfulness that means you can must remember the object of meditation through reading of books listening teaching whatever you need good mindfulness then you won't forget the object of meditation. Meditation, right? At the beginning, yes, for example, you know, I told you the last class, everybody visualize Buddha Shakyamuni, look at the Buddha Shakyamuni, you look and you just, you know, half close, your eyes half close, then you try to meditate on, yes, at the beginning, you can see the Buddha image in Buddha image, right? Then, slowly, slowly, disappear. Or maybe some, first we visualize this size, they suddenly become huge. Right? Sometimes become very small. Sometimes the Buddha, the Buddha moving here, there. The color change. Right? His problem, everybody has the same problem. Doesn't matter, at the beginning, don't worry too much. Try to have, you know, the image of the Buddha. Try to have, not so clear, it's okay. That means, you know, you know we are, we, we look, look like we are teaching been a ABC for the you know two years two years like a child. When you say A, eh, the children say ah, right? Okay, let them say ah, ah slowly. Then say ah, 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 a, a final will come A. At the beginning, you have some you know all the problem. You don't worry. Just try to focus on the chosen object. Not so clear is okay. You know, if the object is moving, it's okay. Try to catch up the object. Then, you know, maybe first time, second time, third time, one day, two day, three day. The continuously you, you know, try to have a mindfulness, try to meditate on the object. Then slowly you can have a stable object. Stable object. Then, when you, the object is become quite stable, stable, you know, you're able to focus, then you need to focus, you know, two things, right? One is a clear and freshness. Clear and freshness. That means, let's say, you know, everybody meditate on the Buddha Shakyamuni, yes, you're able to focus, but the object is not so clear. Then you try to have the object is more clear, more vivid. Then, in order to have, try to have a more vivid and more clear, 
you 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 focus too much right then that mean then you can have a vivid object the object is become very vivid or very clear but you got problem what excitement excitement okay that mean you re- this mean exactly you know meditating on something is exactly you have to follow the middle way not so legs not so tight look like you know playing guitar if you tight too much the sound won't be nice if you too loose sound won't be nice you tight in the right way this mean when you concentrate when you meditate on something try to have a vivid also have a the freshness vivid mean clear and very freshness that mean for some time you know you are looking at the like a movie you can see the movie you are watching the movie you can see what happened in the you know uh, on the screen but half of your mind is not there that mean that time you have a vivid object but you are not freshness you are not fully focus on right that mean try to have a, a very clear and stable only clear is not enough enough not stable is not enough must have a true there's then there's a few problems right so when you try to meditate on the a meditate on the uh, object of meditation sometimes you have a not so clear that when that time what do you have you have a laxity laxity you can have laxity because of the what what the cause condition of the laxity lethargy lethargy what does mean lethargy ah uh, yeah that's why they therefore everybody must know the definition of lethargy okay lethargy then another is uh slack slackness right skullness slackness do you know the difference between slackness and lethargy huh huh blacks lethargy right and also somebody some master says you know laxity is look like slackness right slackness actually the slackness the lethargies lethargy are are the cause and condition of the laxity condition laxity and lethargy why we have you know the somebody has a many big problem of the you know lethargy and laxity then you need to know the or what are the condition second you know yes you don't have any problem to have the vivid and clear object you can see the object is very clearly you can see emptiness is very clearly you can see impermanence very clearly but we we'll see you don't have any problem with the lethargy and laxity and slackness slackness but you have problem with the excitement 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 mean his mind is become too excited he's go somewhere so do you remember uh, the definition of excitement mind derived by attachment then a function yeah this mean lethargy you know i'm sorry excitement this mean is a men- mental state mental state derived by attachment you know the le- a- uh, excitement arises because of the based on the due to the attachment attachment this mean you know you are doing meditation on Im- impermanence you know first at the beginning you are okay suddenly you wish to drink coffee right huh. you you wish to go to meet someone this mean when you feel you wish to drink coffee you have a desire you have a attachment on the coffee that attachment drag your mind from the meditation it does mean derived by attachment then we call what we call excitement 
Also, you do remember the, the differences between excite men and second one, another excite men and dis, destruction, right? destruction, right? Destruction. Do you know the differences between two of them? Both of them, you know, uh, dis, uh, destroy the concentration. You know, concentration because you are. You are meditated on something. Suddenly, your mind is not there. One is due to the legs, uh, excitement. One is due to the destruction. Okay. Then excitement related with the attachment. Attachment. Okay. Destruction not necessarily you don't know, derive by attachment can be. Derived, derived by anger, derived by, you know, positive action, positive mind. For example, you are doing meditation on impermanence. You, you are, when suddenly you remember to recite mantra. Suddenly you remember to do, you know, reading books, lamrim. This also considered as a dis, you know, uh, dist, distraction, but not considered as a excitement. Okay? Therefore, so... So when you do meditation is so important. I said many times, you know, we we don't have we are not lacking of teacher. We are not lacking of books. We are not lacking of the times. We are not really lacking of the having not enough knowledge of Dharma. We have a more than enough teacher. You have a more than enough books. You have a more than enough you know knowledge of Dharma. Mostly we are lacking of what? Meditation, meditation. Particularly, you know, the Mahayan practitioner like, you know, Singaporean Buddhist, Tibetan Buddhist, you know, we do so many chanting, recitation, ritual, puja, offering. These are important, important, but this is, those are the not main practice. Please, everybody must know, you know, recitation, chanting, prostration, offering, going and visit all the holy places, these are important, but those are not our main practice. Okay, but we think it's opposite. Right? Oh, do you do practice? Yeah, I do practice. But early morning I recite, you know, 500 on money, pay me home, 300 medicine, Buddha, da, 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 right? It's not, you know, we are doing, you know, kind of, we are following kind of wrong track. Therefore, we must do recitation, chanting, you know, like prostration, must, but those are not man practice. If you this if this is man practice, if this is the case, what happened then? Then Buddha Shakyamuni no need to explain emptiness, impermanence, poor noble truth, right? Simply say Buddha, you can recite you know mantra every day. But Buddha never said this is true of suffering. You must you must recognize. No no. This is the truth of suffering. You must abandon. You must eliminate. This is origin of suffering. No. This is the truth of suffering. You must recognize. This is origin of suffering. You must eliminate, abandon. This is truth of uh, cessation. You must achieve. This is truth of the path. You must practice. But you must practice. Look at Recognize suffering, eliminate the cause or condition of suffering, achieve the cessation. How achieve practice? Practice of Dharma. How practice? You know, then, you know, the mainly practice of ethical discipline, practice of um, meditative concentration, practice of wisdom. Peter never say, how practice recitation mantra? How to practice? You know, do prostration. No. Say, meditate. So meditation is so important, you know, but we have been trying to do meditation, but most time, you know, we don't have a right understanding of meditation. That's why, please everybody read, you know, all the pages, you know, the Lamrim or other books, doesn't matter. You, you read very carefully, try to understand based on your ex own experience. Okay, this is, let what does mean lethargy? Oh, this is the definition. Do, do I have a lethargy? Yes. When I do meditation, I cannot see the meditation object very clearly. I feel sleepy. 
you know my mind is very foggy that means you have a lethargy due to lethargy first look at is exactly look. so this is you know com, uh, concentration this is object of meditation at the beginning look at, i hold tightly i can see the book i hold tightly slowly slowly loose loose then i drop right first you fully concentrate you have a mindfulness you remember the object you fully concentrate due to the mindfulness slowly you got you know foggy mind you got sleepy mind you got the lazy mind then loose loose what your object of meditation become looser looser then you cannot focus right look at everybody say you can see at the beginning everybody do meditation yes like like this one slowly <laughs> then oh the bit bigger right that mean at the beginning we able to meditate on something after a while we feel sleepy we feel tired because of the lethargy because of the uh, slackness that mean you must know yes i cannot do there another important this is i i also do okay when i do kind of i'm not really practitioner everybody know right i get up like 5 5 30 go walk in the morning all the way to marina and back come back have a coffee this is my practice <laughs> <laughs> this is my morning practice evening also go all the way marina bay and come back have a coffee and then i sleep okay but some day i try to do meditation exactly you know at the beginning very difficult if us okay then slowly don't remember how remember how forget <laughs> <laughs> therefore when you think about why i have you know this kind of feeling i feel so tired i want to take a rest you know what we tend we have a short nap every day i do that then i know it's a bad habit when you, when i try to meditate i feel sleepy oh take a rest have a short nap then fall asleep that's what what buddha said you have lethargy and slack uh, uh, slackness one you are you are you, are, you sleep you sleep do you remember okay now we study about the cause can one because once we eat you know too much eat too much that's why buddha said you know buddha don't say you know doesn't doesn't say all the buddhists <laughs> all the you know ordens full ordens should not take dinner why there's a two reason actually in india all the you know um full ordens monks and nuns totally they are you know big shoe big shoe mean back beggar actually it's a beggar they have to bike their clothes must you know get fire based on back food back is a beggar big shoe related to the beggar actually they were totally beggar that's mean all the you know full ordens take breakfast lunch dinner then i think village people will be you know they got lot of problem that's why i said you sh- you should have a breakfast lunch no dinner one reason so difficult to get food there are so many you know monks and nuns second most important look at generally if you eat dinner if you take you know heavy dinner many people can wet like me okay before i was 82 now come down 68 68 do do you know heavy body that you feel so sleepy you feel so heavy even though you try to have a you try to upgrade your body first few few second okay then like this body becomes so heavy therefore you know buddha asked you know take dinner if you take dinner you have a you know sleepy mind when you sleep you have a long sleeping then you cannot get up early morning if you cannot get up early morning if you sleep early morning for a long time then you have a strong condition to have a lethargy and slackness that mean eating too much can be cause of lethargy and slackness right one condition second if you sleep early morning like you know like 4 5 o'clock 5 or 5 to 
then it was for you so difficult to overcome you know the lethargy uh, the lethargy and slackness or sleepy mind because the two terms were bored in morning let's say uh, but in ancient time there's no watch no watch right everybody just check okay tomorrow we will meet somewhere when they say check your plum what do you call line if you able to see your plum line right it like in no like sun, moonlight or no moon if you able to see that mean it's close to the early morning they check always the plum line that's why you know in the ancient time when we take the mahayana precept the no watch say you must take the precept when you are able to see your plum line this is like watch right from line therefore that time if, if you still sleep you know sleep therefore you so difficult to overcome from lethargy and slackness that's why you should not sleep early morning you know after let's say 5:30 or 5 they, why morning is so important you should not sleep morning time is so important is the time to uh, rest up all the energy flow you know freely is if all energy is arising within your body that time if you use the energy in the perfect way you can have a perfect meditation perfect practice let's see you know you just do not you today you check uh, before you go to sleep you just walk around you know around you can see the plant you can see the grass you can see the flower actually you can look like you can see they look so sleepy look so tired evening even you look at the plant tree flower look so tired look so sleepy just you walk early morning you know five o'clock you look around uh, look like the trees are you know waking flower is blooming you know the birds are you know singing it's just arising sometimes you have your energy you have a channel chakra all the energy is arising in the morning you take this advantage to practice the evening also said you should not sleep you know like the evening certain time uh, i think it's between uh, evening i think seven through around seven at nine let's say i'm not sure the right time seven at nine morning evening is the time for fire you go fire you know fire time that time also all the energies is you know arising due to the you know that kind of heat or warmness also you must take this advantage if you have a tendency to sleep early morning in the morning that time then you always has a problem with the lethargy and slackness slackness also i can it's very interesting you know uh kind of not experiment very interesting story when i was in the gudu monastery in eastern india there was a, a practitioner he always do meditation for almost many many years but he got the jaundic problem jaundic right eating a lot of butter your body become yellow jaundice problem if you have a jaundic problem can you eat butter or oily food you cannot right but the monk the, the practitioner he had to eat you know like oily food he he must eat butter some reason then he take you know one cup of oil, like a liquid oil like butter it's cup of butter he drink early morning sudden time drink no problem because this is a time for running the wind energy it doesn't get any effect for the jaundice if you eat the butter you know after that time then you will get you know big effect for you the uh, jaundice this mean there certain time you do you should not sleep in the morning this time even in this time you do practice if you do practice that time then you for you very easy to overcome from slackness and lethargy one you should not eat too much second should not sleep in that time third is whatever you do do with the awareness always aware always aware for example you know after you woke up after 20 minutes you just think 
What I have done after I woke up till now, you must remember each of them very clearly. Okay, I woke up, I wear my clothes, I fold my, I don't think many people fold the blanket, huh? <laughs> huh? But I always fold the blanket. I fold the blanket. First, which one, which blanket, which, you know, the like bed sheet, I fold. Put up, which, which, which put first, which put second. You remember all your activity which you have done for within 20 minutes. Then also, you, before you do something, you must remember, okay, I'm doing this. I will do this, I will do this, I will do this. Therefore, you have very, you could have a very good, you know, uh, mindfulness. Mindfulness, then also very easy to overcome from lethargy and slackness. Because, I'm doing, because I don't want to read all the pages, huh? Then how you should overcome from lethargies and slackness? One is you, you must avoid, you know, the heavy food. Therefore, look at, many people said in Buddhism, you should not eat garlic, you should not eat meat. Now you can see connection, right? If you eat meat, your body becomes very fat, you feel so heavy, then you feel sleepy. Eating garlic also, you will see. If you take garlic in, in dinner, if you take dinner with the garlic, that, that day, in that day, definitely you will have a heavy sleeping. Because garlic reduces the wind energy. Meat reduces the wind energy. That's why I said Buddhists say, you know, you should not eat meat, you should not eat garlic, you should not eat onion. Because its effect, it, 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 it have a you know, bad effect for your practice. Right? Then, how we should overcome this lethargy and slackness? If you feel your mind is so poor, you know, foggy, so, not so clear, so sleepy, then suddenly you meditate on you know, light, light like a sun, you know, sunlight, moonlight. You just imagine you are in the, you know, botany garden, walk around. You look, look, imagine you look around the flower, the trees, suddenly your mind become more aware, your mind become more fresh. Then you are, you are able to overcome from the sleepy mind, you know, slack, slackness or lethargy. And also, you just you know, visualize, you know, Buddha Shakyamuni. You just think about, you know, imagine, oh, you are so sleepy. You are not so, so, you know, not so clear. Suddenly, a Buddha Shakyamuni appeared to you. You want to sleep sleepy? No, right? Ha! Ah, you just looking like this. Well, just imagine this kind of, then you don't, you won't have the lethargy and, you know, and sleepy mind and lazy mind. And also, Lama Tsongkhapa Pas is most important. If you have this kind of problem, then you must meditate on great compassion, bodhicitta, you know, bodhicitta and renunciation. Remember all the good, all the qualities of practice of bodhicitta, emptiness. Also remember the, you know, the result of laziness, result of sleep, sleep, you know, sleep, sleeping, result of. Then you compare which is good for you. Practice meditation good or sleeping is good? Huh? Which is good? Huh? Sleeping good or practice bodhicitta is good? Yeah, sleeping is good because I feel so tired. If, if I practice bodhicitta, I feel more tired. <laughs> yeah, at the moment you think this way, but in the long term, if I practice bodhicitta, I will become, you know, Buddha child. I become bodhisattva. I will become Buddha. What the wonderful, right? For example, it looks like you can see sometimes, you know, the two, you know, drunk men is partying on the street. I saw three people, you know, just they're arguing at the behind the park. Three of totally drunk, they're arguing each other. I'm just looking at, I thought, huh, interesting. They are totally drunk. They don't remember everything. Still try to, you know, win the, through the argument, right? That means when you fully understand bodhicitta, great compassion, reality, when you look at the other people, other people like a, same like that. Therefore, you know, you have to remember all the benefit of practice of bodhicitta, emptiness, whatever. Then it overcome from the, you know, sleepy mind, lazy mind as well as, you know, the lethargy and, you know, slackness. Then, you overcome, you're able to overcome from the 
laxity slowly or with laxity then another problem you are able to overcome from the laxity still you have a problem with the excitement if you have, your mind wish to drink coffee wish to go somewhere wish to do something then that moment you need to bring back your mind based on meditate on the like renunciation you know like emptiness mainly you know, no no renunciation and impermanence and death if you remember death I, you know when i visit the hospital to see vinis grandpa i really can see you know he's on the bed just for everybody around now he's living within the doctor say in a few hours i thought you know maybe i said more than 10 to 15 hours because i check the pulse is very strong i check the heat is very strong heat then i can see look at that moment now he's living can anybody anybody can go with him no he, you know can he can he carry anything with him no what all the negative action and positive actions suddenly you remember impermanence and death then suddenly you fully awake you know from the sleepy sleepy mind lazy mind you thought oh if i death this moment what happened i should not sleep i should not be lazy I must do my practice right that's why in order to control the lex uh, excitement practice renunciation impermanence remember the death in order to overcome from the laxity and try to remember all the benefit of meditation then your mind just put in the middle not so lax relax not so tight you know in the middle middle then finally you have to go through the remember the nine mental state right now nine, nine stages so i want to say uh, so before the class here so this kind of you know revision class how you must practice the lamrim how you must pack you can call lamrim or not how you practice the dharma your daily basis then another problem you know is very common problem for everybody when we face problems suddenly we don't remember really practice the dharma always remember oh do puja right protector puja medicine puja you know remember do puja which is very good still you remembering doing some good thing when you face you know emotional problems mental problems you know upset unhappy you must remember practice of dharma first i must practice dharma today i'm not happy why not happy i have argument with someone oh do you remember practice of energy meditation then practice the dharma it reduce you know the negative thoughts then you make you happy when we usually when when we face problem we tell you know our friends we tag someone oh i have this problem this problem we thought the people can solve your problem not always yeah right if you have uh, some problem oh i cannot you know open my key you can take somebody come fix the key oh i am very angry what should i do then people tell you don't worry be happy <laughs> right then you must say i know i want to be happy i don't know how to be happy then say then he say i don't know if you know that practice dharma when you are upset you definitely you are able to control you are able to be happy right upset actually when we face problem any problems at the beginning i said many times at the beginning you should not think this is problem right when you think this is problem what how do you feel if you think this is problem how do you feel huh big problem hmm like this huh? right yeah it suddenly is he make you discourage right discourage make make you very weak problem you should think no no this is not is challenging for me it is a big, big challenge you say it is challenge for me how do you feel oh i must do something right you should think what when ever you face problem you should not think this is a really problem this is you know 
is challenging in my life i must deal i must i must deal this problem i must learn how to overcome first you should know that this problem you should think this is kind of you know test for me first second if you really think this is problem you should not think it's a big problem is problem is small problem is nothing i can handle right then for you very easy to overcome actually since i came to singapore i'm really sorry to say to you you know most of your you are singaporean you have a very interesting kind of tendency or i'm not sure it's a culture maybe culture small problem make bigger <laughs> big problem be bigger bigger problem bigger problem huge actually we must do in the opposite bigger problem big big problem smaller smaller problem no problem you are really opposite you know small thing making really complex so if you go in the in the opposite way big problem somebody says, this is big problem you should say no no it's not big big problem it's small problem <laughs> somebody say oh i have a small problem you should say it's nothing nothing don't worry nothing then somebody say i have a small problem really huh a big problem ah huh? right make <laughs> make more problem unhappy right somebody say oh i have this problem really huh Ah oh, yeah yeah it's quite big problem quite big problem huh? <laughs> right then somebody says, oh i have a big problem what to do you cannot do anything you have you you just go through no problem <laughs> right therefore you have this kind of tendency you know maybe it is based on my ignorance but i can see look like in this kind of thing okay so we can have a uh break it can have a tea or can have a water and coffee we have a coffee i think right three in one no problem, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> very good okay when you get angry you say no problem huh? <laughs> okay so i have a break also you know somebody say ha huh. he said like that and this is like that huh? they also we we add that yeah you are right you are right he always said like he should, she always said like that right he always add again and again you never say no 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 she won't say like that right you say yeah 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 you are right you are right he always said like she always say like that <laughs> okay so shall we resume okay <laughs> now let's say you know before we start the new lesson we need to know uh, the causes and condition of excitement and uh, laxity and also is mentioned laxity has a you know two types one is a uh, uh virtues one is a uh, neutral so the gross laxity is a uh, uh neutral neither positive nor negative because how while the laxity is you know be virtues be neutral because at the beginning you have a good motivation also you try to meditate on the you know meditation object that means the mind is already kind of a uh, positive side that means when the laxity become very subtle there is become positive virtues before become subtle then the laxity is just neutral okay laxity can be neutral can be virtues then is mentioned the causes condition what is the page number i think page number the methods or the regulus right 58 59 okay 
you can see you know page number 59 uh, the last paragraph laxity may be virtuous or ethically natural and i'm not sure they say ethically directly you can say natural neutral whereas letter g is either or non virtuous or ethically neutral and also mental obscuration right let this mean laxity can be virtuous can be neutral a letter g non virtuous or neutral never be virtuous letter g right then <clears throat> now you can look at the page number 60 uh the paragraph it is easy to recognize excitement but laxity is hard to comprehend since it is not clearly defined in the identified in the authoritative classic text right we talk about laxity and excitement excitement very easy to recognize based on our own, on our own experience also there is a very clear defined according to many texts Uh, laxity not therefore so difficult to identify it it is also very important because in this case it is major point of the misunderstanding concerning flawless concentration therefore if you really don't know exactly that i you know uh, the definition of laxity if you if you not able to identify the laxity then there's a danger to mix up between two of laxity and concentration right this why you have to know the laxity based on your own experience major point of misunderstanding concerning fullness concentration therefore you should experience laxity with an excited exciting awareness and on that basis examine it will be right that means you must have a very this kind of precise mind very good awareness to aware the laxity it to identify the laxity otherwise you have a you know confusion between concentration and laxity right laxity because laxity actually you know is still you are concentrated on the you know you are meditated on the object this mean look like you have you are doing good meditation but not because the clear clarity is not there right the, the clarity is not there that's why many people thought because if if, if you are able to concentrate on something for you know 10 minutes 20 minutes 1 hour you think i'm doing good meditation my meditation is very well very good but you are concentrated on the object of meditation but you are not really you know the mind is not really concentration is the mind is become laxity laxity okay there's therefore please everybody you know <clears throat> try to identify the laxity based on your ex- own experience now this next paragraph the methods for developing vigilance and recognize laxity and excitement it is not enough just to have an understanding of laxity and excitement you have to be able to develop vigilance that occur accordingly uh detect whether laxity or excitement is present during the meditation right now we everybody let's say you know we know what does mean laxity we know what does mean uh, excitement we are able to recognize it not just enough to recognize but you we need to develop vigilance also you know some other books use interpretation right interpretation right inter no interpretation interpretation that mean when you meditate on something make sure but generally you know generally you can recognize why are you do you, you are why are you are doing meditation make sure that time you able to recognize oh now my meditation is have something problem some problem because lex now my mind become laxity then you try to you know overcome you try to eliminate the laxity then now you know 
you do your money is very clear and within the clear man make sure the money is not got excitement that this was you have to play very carefully with the meditation only must to develop vigilance that recognize electricity and excitement as soon as they occur right as soon as is come you must go on us yes no electricity is there no excitement there then electricity is there and you try to overcome using the all the methods excitement and use the antidotes you know overcome and again do meditation you must also develop visualize the recognizing them when they are on the watch of the occurring before they have actually arisen that means once you, once is arise you must recognize before you fully arise almost see the starting point you must recognize okay this is not only the you know lexity and <clears throat> excitement for example when we when, when we say i'm very upset i'm very you know unhappy i'm very angry you know i got lot of destruction then we say when we we say when we when the man become quite strong right when you say i'm not happy that mean the unhappy mind the feeling become quite strong already arise you know quite high degree is too late then so difficult to control that me look at the external phenomena look at the house you know the dbc building is a big, big building look outside you know the tree is a huge tree big tree the thing about how it it was started the started point there's a small seeds very tiny seeds right then the seeds become sprout then a lot of tree time for this become bigger and bigger now it's a huge tree the big tree start based on very small seeds the thing of our body started from the very small particle now how we have a huge body that me anger something when you feel anger you have you are really angry angry is quite strong is strong based on very small amount if you are very you know a master how the anger arises if you know how the anger arises you must recognize beginning for, at the beginning oh there is no good now my anger is arising then you can definitely you can control right there attachment oh is no good my attachment is arising this mean the attachment is very weak and very small you able to control if you become very strong you know very powerful then you try to uh, control you cannot right that's why you can see people get very angry then the people fighting and killing and banging here and there if the people have a very little anger we cannot do right therefore we must know you know the, the beginning is almost you know supposed to you if you know oh, is going to start and you able to control this mean you know verge of the occurring before they have actually arisen this is the and domest uh, domesticated by statement in kamala shila that mean why you are meditating must know already lexity arise already excitement arise or oh, before they arise you must know is you know is going to arise the lexity and excitement then you is it do you know overcome otherwise is become quite too late this is he said then so the next page like page number 61 there's a question right how do you develop this vigilance you know the very the very, the very sensitive awareness how you can vigilance how you how do you develop a reply is most important cause is the process of maintaining the mindfulness if you need very strong you know precise vigilance you must maintain the mindfulness always remember continuously remember for example if you always remember you know the object of meditation then there's no any way to forget the object of meditation right this mean in order to develop you know vigilance 
in order to develop uh, in, in, introspection introspection mind you must maintain what mindfulness if you can develop you know continual mindfulness you will be able to avoid forgetting the object of med- mind meditation and becoming becoming distracted therefore everybody learn how to have a good mindfulness on of the meditation object then there's another must i would explain now just turn to page number 62 using the remedy for fall, falling to try to and uh, to try to eliminate them even when they are recognized now is another problem okay because due to your study based on your experience you recognize the laxity you recognize the excitement also you recognize when they arise is almost you know going to arise you 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 will recognize but another problem look at using the remedy for falling to try to eliminate them even when they are recognized even though it, you you able to recognize if you don't try to eliminate when it arises then is a you know big kind of problem in your meditation as explained above you develop very powerful mindfulness and vigilance through proper use of the methods for maintaining the mindfulness and vigilance right you are able to develop powerful mindfulness then vision is then able to notice even very subtle laxity and excitement due to having very powerful mindfulness you have a good vigilance due to vigilance when subtle ex- excitement errors you will notice subtle excitement errors you will notice right so there's no problem recognizing the occurrence of laxity and excitement however when you make no effort right when you make no effort to stop those two as soon as they arise your complacent or failure to apply yourself constitute excitement serious problem for you your constant uh, your concentration that you recognize yes is arising then you not you not put effort to stop you say is okay it is come then this become very you know disturbing for your meditation not only that here look at mention again for if you you know practice in this way your mind will form bad habits and then it will be extremely difficult to do develop concentration free of laxity and excitement that extremely difficult to have a develop concentration which is free of laxity and excitement therefore you now you can see the meditation of mean you know fully you know observe the object of meditation without having any laxity and excitement if there's a subtle laxity that means you you don't have the full concentration therefore to remedy to fall failure to apply yourself to elimination of the laxity excitement that means as soon as it arises you must eliminate any of them he has a two parts right this section has a two parts intention and the way that stop laxity and excitement now another important intention second is underlying cause of laxity and excitement now we study very short time intention and the way is stop laxity and excitement intention right intention what is intention it is the mental activity of applying your mind having the function of drawing your mind to virtues non virtues or the ethically neutral as is talking about the you know uh, intention intention because we talk we always talk about karma right karma karma is a 
two parts. One is the intention. One is the actual, you know, the action. Karma. Many people always say karma is kind of, you know, verbal or physical or mental action. That's why karma has a two, you know, two parts, two types. One is actually mind, mind, intention. Second is the imprint, you know, live by the intention. For example, before we do prostration, what we have, we have a intention, intention. First of all, I must do this, I will do this, this kind of intention. Here we must know a little bit about, you know, the nature of mind and mental, you know, mind and, uh, mind and, what do you call, mind and, huh, 52 mental, mental factor, 52 or 51 mental factor, 51 or 52, there's a two numbers, right, yeah, 51 or 52, there's a two different numbers, so look at, we always talk about mind, I will say mind, my mind is, you know, not so clear, let's say, the mental factors are, you know, the cabinet, cabinet, right? Like uh, ministers, other ministers. The money is the, you know, the prime minister. Prime minister. The money is look like prime minister. Right? Let's say our money is look like a Singaporean, Singapore prime minister. All other mental factors, you know, attachment, desire, compassion, love, tolerance, all of these we call mental factor. Those are look like other ministers, you know, health minister, finance minister, finance, finance minister, whatever. Whatever, you know, done by other ministers depend on chief minister, right? The chief ministers, whatever must be done by the other minister is all very much depend on the chief minister. This means whatever actions, you know, act, by other mental factor, the money is look like the chip, chip. Now let's say the finan you know the Singapore, you know finan finance minister, financial minister, right? Financial, yeah, yeah finance minister done good job, right? Economic increase very high. We never say oh, you know, the finan finance minister did good job. Oh, our prime minister did a good job, right? Because even though, you know, actually, you know, secretary, all the workers done a lot of job, the name always to the prime minister, right? This means practice compassion, actually, the, the compassion is the mental factor, it's not really, the, you know, principal mind, but whatever the mind, Compassion mind function is very much, very much depend on the man mind. That means we have no how mind and mental factor, man and mental factor, you know, function is, you know, uh, together. Then intention. That means before we do any verbal action, you know, body action, mental action, first we we need a intention, right? So without intention, without intention, you won't have a physical, verbal, mental action. All three actions very much depend on the intention. That's why, you know, we can say karma has a two types. One is the intention, one is the actual, the imprint, live by you know, other action, uh, you know, verbally, physically, mentally, intention. Now look at, what is the intention? It is the mental activity of applying your mind, having the function of drawing, drawing your mind to virtues and non-virtues. So your minds, you know, engage with the virtues, non-virtues, neutral. How? How your mind engage? Your mind pulled by intention, intention, okay? Your mind pulled by intention. So intention has a function 
of doing your minds to virtues, non-virtues, or ethical nurture. This is how you should understand it. Intention mean. For example, now you can see. Example. What is the example? Oyen falling are compelled to move under the influence of magnet. Yes. In the let's say there is a big magnet. There is a mini piece of iron. If you move the what you magnet, all iron move, move right, move. This mean here the uh, the magnets is look like the mental factors, mental factors. Okay, mental factors is look like magnet. Intention is look like magnet. The magnet, you know, compel move the what. Uh, the aeon that means the mind actually engaged to the you know virtues non virtues because of the intention right intention no question after you have thus arose your mind to eliminate laxity and excitement how do you stop laxity and excitement right reply Mental laxity involves a very excessive inward, we inward, indoor, right? Withdrawal. That means laxity always very excessive, always looking inward, leading to slip, slippage in the way of your apprehending the object of meditation. Now you have to see the few parts. We say first, say very excessive. Invert withdrawal. Not only that, leading to you know slippage in the way of your uh, uh, apprehending the object of meditation. That means first you are able to apprehend the object of meditation. That means, for example, you are able to go meditate on impermanence. That means you are apprehend what impermanence, impermanence, right? Apprehence. Then. Due to laxity, slowly, you know, you not able to apprehend the impermanence. That means your mind become fully invert. Invert means look like you know very become very quiet. You cannot apprehend the object of meditation. Slippage in the way you apprehend the object of meditation. So you should direct. Direct your mind to delightful things that cause you to expand outward. That means, no, look at now, your mind becomes very quiet, very foggy, very, very, you know, become very lazy. Then you suddenly you meditate on the delight, you know, delightful things, delightful thing. Then suddenly your mind again become out, outward, not just looking in. This is how you you know overcome. Then there's a lot of quotation. The next, there's a you know differentiation between laxity or or so he said laxity or slackness is a follow. The citadel mind that two terms described as a call lex call laxity. Why we call laxity because there's a decline in the way you. Apprehend the object of meditation, right? What does mean laxity? Because there's a can you read for me? Decline in the way you apprehend the object of meditation. Decline. That means before you able to apprehend, say suddenly not able to apprehend. That means decline, right? They call laxity. What we call you know slackness. Because there is an excessive withdrawal in what, right? This is what we call what we call slackness, excessive in what withdrawal. We call slackness. We call laxity because there is a decline in the way you apprehend the object of meditation. Now you must know differences between laxity and Slackness. Then, as a homework, I'm not, I'm not sure when we have a 
Lamrim class. I don't think we have a Lamrim class next week, right? No, right? No. As a homework, everybody study, you know, the page number 66 tool until the 71. Mainly try to know the underlying cause of laxity and excitement. Also is mentioned very clearly sign of the laxity. Sign means causes and condition. You must know what are the causes and condition of the laxity and excitement. How to overcome. And also look at what to do when laxity and excitement are absent. Right? That means it's explained meditation on the equanimity. Right? And there's no excitement. There no 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 laxity. That means your mind is focused on the object very in the middle way, right? That means equanimity. That means neither laxity nor excitement. Equanimity, equanimity. When your mind becomes very equanimity, then for you very easy to change the mind always in the positive side. Okay, equanimity then positive side. Okay, then we can uh, stop here. So before we do the dedication prayers, does anybody have any question? Any types of question related to the, this uh, class? Any other question related to the Dharma? No? Huh? Not today. Okay. Okay, that's me, everybody, I think. Understood, huh? <laughs> what you Chinese language? What you call? Ting the tong. Ting the tong, ma. Boy. Okay. It's not easy, you know. It's not easy. One is, I told you many times, not easy, because it's translated from Tibetan language to English, because. All of you, you know, not familiar with the Tibetan language. Second, when translated into Tibetan language, they trans try to translate, you know, directly, directly Tibetan as a in English. That's why number one difficult because of the translation. Second difficult because of the my English. Third difficult because your homework. <laughs> huh? Uh -huh. Why we have this kind of habit, right? Let's see. Why we just, you know, like a mind really abuse and then not the bad habit comes in and then after that it's a really a serious problem? Actually, uh, the lazy mind, you know, the forgetful minds, I think mainly there's a few conditions, right? Lexity, few conditions. Once, I think physically, you know, our, our body is not fit on the, not that fit for meditation because of the food. The mainly, I think, usually we don't do whatever we do, we don't do with the awareness, we don't do with the vigilance. Vigilance, right? Vigilance. That's why when we try to do meditation on something, we try to focus on something, suddenly, you know, first we have a quite good, able to uh, meditate on the object of meditation first. Then slowly it's become very darkness. Oh, not that darkness, not the dark, you know, you able to see but not able to able to see very clearly. Because of the one habit, 
बिकॉज वी डू वॉट एवर यू डू वी डोंट डू विद मनफुलनेस विजिलेंस दिस बाय वी हैव अ पेड हैबिट नॉट रिमेंबर द ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ वेरी डोंट वी डोंट रिमेंबर द ऑब्जेक्ट इवन दू वी रिमेंबर नॉट क्लियरली वी रिमेंबर क्लियरली नॉट कंटिन्यूसली कंटिन्यूसली बट विद द लेक्स टी दिस मैंशन योर फ्यू कंडीशन ऑफ द द यू नो दल द हैबिट्स एंड ऑल्सो लुक एट so most of us you know most of us over 50 years so 50 over 50 years you know over 50 last 50 years we didn't think about how we can do right meditation we never learn now we just you know heard we learn when we try to do the right meditation we have all these problems because we have all the tendency with us for even though just forget the previous life within this lifetime since we were born until you know now our mind is very wild right not trained we got a lot of habit you know look at very interesting our life when we sleep we are very hurry to walk up get up right we set up all around we set up the times so we are very whole, you know hurry they were very hurry to finish breakfast they were very hurry to go somewhere very hurry to finish come back to home after come back very hurry to sleep whole our life is just going to hurry very rush very hurry then we look like we are very hurry to dry this one finish we thought finish before finish we want to do we want to start something that's why we have a really you know bad tendency all the tendency to cause to arise laxity excitement excitement mainly caused by uh, lagging or attachment you like too much you know like uh, eating or drinking playing shot if you like too much then when you do meditation suddenly you remember all the you know minds therefore i the mainly i think habits changing habit you know we cannot change you know to the total white to black look like washing clothes right we put the water then we put the soap or then we you know rough a little bit you know slowly then you can see the black cloth slowly turn white so should not try to change your habit very quickly you cannot you will try to change very quickly the final is you have to you you going to give up your study and practice okay i told you right the volume do you remember transition you cannot slowly okay slowly then i do you overcome all the habits yes any question yeah okay so then we do mm mm-hmm. Yeah, those who are having very physical fit body they don't need to much care no they may be older like you say all of us are young sorry some of you are mm. mm. so does it mean that those who have got athletic body will do a better meditation no because look at is the athletic has a very habit to train their body you know train their body they never train their mind maybe they have a more d- destructive mind than our us physically they are they have a very healthy body physically very tan mentally not somebody mentally very tan not physically not someone can be both not necessary you know it like people have a, a good opportunity to do better meditation maybe not maybe someone not necessarily Yeah. 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 They. That's why they. They are good in one, one, one way. Not every way. Yeah. Not necessary. Yeah. Not necessary. Maybe they got more. You know, when they when they try to meditate on something, they cannot. They remember all the exercise. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we do dedication again.